What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the iPhone 5 versus the iPhone 4S. We're going to take a look at the speed and performance to see what this A6 processor does to improve the performance over the iPhone 4S. Now Apple is claiming that the iPhone 5 has twice the processing power and graphics of the iPhone 4S and that sinks largely to the new A6 processor which is a dual core chip running at 1.3 gigahertz. The 4S has the A5 processor which is also a dual core chip but running at only 800 megahertz. The iPhone 5 also has double the RAM at 1 gig. So in this video I'm going to run through some synthetic benchmarks to give us some data points to compare the phones to and then we'll run some real world tests to see how those specs translate to the first hand experience. Now, both these phones are virtual clones of each other, both running iOS 6 with the same apps and settings. Before I proceed, I just want to show you that I've closed down all the suspended and background apps. I also want to jump to my Safari settings to make sure that the cache and cookies have been cleared and so that uh, no preloaded content skews my results. I'm also setting the browser to private browsing to prevent it from caching data during the test. That will also explain the dark UI color. Now for the power cycle test, both phones shut down at exactly the same time, but the iPhone 5 is substantially quicker at boot up. So you can see I can start using my iPhone 5 while the 4S is still loading. For our first benchmarks, we're going to check out Geekbench, which will measure the overall hardware performance of each device. It also reveals some of the system specs which Apple otherwise does not share, such as the CPU clock speeds. Since Apple claimed we would see twice the speed and performance, it makes sense to see double the score here. But we're actually seeing triple the score, and that's thanks largely to the added RAM, which is also faster RAM than the 4S. Apple also claims twice the graphics performance, so the best way to test that is to look at the GL benchmark scores. Now, there are plenty of tests to run here, but I'm going to start with just three of them. Now, the on-screen tests look about the same, averaging about 60 frames per second, but the off-screen tests show performance doubled from the 4S, revealing the potential of the new 3-core GPU housed in the A6 chip. For my third test, I'm going to use SunSpider to test the Java rendering and performance of Safari, which should give us a good idea of how quickly Safari on the iPhone 5 can load Java for websites. And once again, we're seeing double the performance gains here with the iPhone 5 completing the test in less than 950 milliseconds, while the iPhone 4S took about 1800 milliseconds. So we should see quicker load times and we'll test that out. Now, the one area where speed boosts tend to show the most obvious impact is in the performance of the camera. And the camera does load noticeably faster on the iPhone 5. When it comes to taking photos, the iPhone 5 can take photos about as fast as you can tap your finger to the screen. Not so much with the iPhone 4S. And when it comes to snapping HDR photos, uh, which requires some processing power, the iPhone 5 is also substantially quicker at completing the task than the 4S. Another good test is video exporting with iMovie. Now on this test, I have identical 36 second long projects in both phones, complete with transitions and music. Now exporting the project in 1080p HD on both phones reveals that the iPhone 5 is moderately faster than the 4S at completing the task. Now these differences will be magnified on export jobs that are significantly larger than this one. Now a good way to test day-to-day -day performance on the iPhone 5 is to see how quickly apps load. The 4S has never been accused of being a slow phone, even even with iOS 6, so the performance gains appear to be minimal. So if we launch apps side by side, you can see that the iPhone 5 is faster than the 4S, which makes the iPhone 5 feel quicker, although the overall differences appear to be minimal. There are bigger performance gains in tasks that can take advantage of the additional RAM, such as apps with cached content like websites, Twitter, and Maps. The iPhone 5 is less bogged down than the 4S when it comes to apps that use infinite scrolling. The Google Plus and YouTube apps are a particularly good example of this. The app's performance therefore feel noticeably smoother with higher frame rates. The Maps app also performed much better on the iPhone 5. The 4S by comparison spends a lot of time reloading the maps while the iPhone 5 has been able to cache more data in the system RAM. So if you're scrolling around the city of Chicago in that flyover mode, you can see that the 4S really struggles to keep up with the iPhone 5. The additional RAM also seems to help with the state of closed apps. For example, if we relaunch apps I have loaded for these comparison videos, you can see that the iPhone 5 has been able to preserve the state of more apps than the iPhone 4S. Also, apps just load much more quickly on the iPhone 5. In terms of Safari performance, websites generally seem to load quicker, which is always dependent on your network connection. But the real performance gains are revealed in the caching of data. For example, we can jump back and forward to our previous pages more quickly, while the iPhone 4S has to spend more time reloading the data. 
Games also load more quickly on the iPhone 5, but performance overall feels about the same, at least with the games currently available, even for games like Wild Blood, which are optimized for the iPhone 5 screen size. Looking closely doesn't really reveal anything significant in terms of improved detail, highlighting, aliasing, or smoother frame rates. Both phones look excellent, but the iPhone 5's larger and better screen quality definitely make it a better gaming option. Overall, the iPhone 5 is noticeably faster, but the 4S is hardly a slow phone. The real gains seem to be in the system RAM, which does contribute to improved day-to-day -day performance of the OS and apps. So that's going to do for me, guys, in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.